What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. This is the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. This is my first official 4K resin 3D printer that I'm getting my hands on with. And so far, I'm pretty dang impressed. In today's video, I'll be giving you guys my initial thoughts and impressions on the video. And then the second half of the video will all be about the unboxing and setup and getting my first prints going on this. And again, this won't be a full review video, just my initial thoughts and impressions. I've had it unboxed and printing for about five straight days. So far, I need a lot more print time under my belt with the machine before I can give a full review of the unit. So that will be coming at some point here. In the future, we'll see. So right off the bat, you'll notice that the Sonic Mini 4K looks very, very familiar to the standard Sonic Mini with the main difference being this uh, Coca-Cola brown or gold here, uh, acrylic display versus the red. The big difference between these two obviously being the 4K mono screen display. It is also slightly larger. You're gonna get a slightly larger build volume with the unit. Uh, also on the inside here, a nice upgrade from the standard Sonic Mini is the all metal vat as well as the angled build plate. Those were uh, plastic for the vat on the standard Sonic Mini. And then it was a flat build plate on the, Sonic, the standard Sonic Mini. And you'd have to upgrade to these. So, I mean, just with those upgrades alone, if you were thinking about getting the standard Sonic Mini, you're already at the price range for the 4K version of the machine, which is pretty dang cool so far. It also works with Chi2 Box, which is what I've done all of my testing with. There's no standard profile available for it just yet. I'm assuming that'll be coming with the next build from Chi2 Box. Lychee Slicer has already mentioned that they are already building a profile to support these 4K Sonic Mini. I haven't yet tested that software out, but I will for sure be looking at that here in a video upcoming soon. So stay tuned for that one. Excited to check that out and see what it, how it compares to Chi2 Box as well. And overall, it was just really easy to unbox and get set up and start printing. I mean, for the most part, most resin 3D printers these days are really straightforward in terms of getting out of the box and plugging in, pouring in some resin, well, first leveling the build plate, but all in all, pretty straightforward process to get a first print going. Uh, I did use Seartech Fast for a large uh, percentage of my prints that I did here, as well as Frozen's new 4K resin, which we'll be talking about here in a little bit. They do recommend to get the best usage out of the printer to use their 4K resin that you're gonna get better detail out of the prints. Again, we'll be talking about that here in just a few minutes. So a few things that I wanna call out that you should be aware of about the machine is that it is louder than the standard Sonic Mini. There's an additional fan, it sounds like in here when it is printing, it is noticeably louder than the standard Sonic Mini. It's not as loud as some of the other resin printers that I have, but it is noticeably louder than the standard version. So if you're familiar with the Sonic Mini, expect this one to have a bit more noise involved with it with those fans to help, I'm assuming, keep everything cool while it's printing. Another thing I wanted to call out is that the build plate is extremely, extremely tight. Normally, it's pretty easy to get these things level, but when you loosen the bolts here on the side, this pressure that's from the bracket onto the build plate is so tight that I feel like sometimes I've had a hard time getting it properly level and it's had me putting an excess amount of pressure on top of the build plate to get it what I think is perfectly level now. So again, just something that you wanna be aware of with this. One other additional thing that I wanna call out that you'll see is, is that the power cable is laughably short. It's maybe three to four feet long. So you might need an extension cable or to buy an additional longer cable depending on where your setup is and how close it is to the outlet. For me, thankfully, I've got an outlet right underneath the top of this table here. But yeah, for my other normal setups, I'm probably gonna need an extension cable for this to run power to it. Uh, one other thing to be aware of is both on the standard Sonic Mini and uh, this 4K version, I have a really, and I mean really hard time keeping this acrylic panel clean and without any sort of smudges or defects or resin particles on it or whatever it is, even when I try and clean it, I feel like it still leaves streaks. So if you are a neat freak or trying to have these on display so that they look really nice, 
don't intend on that for these particular units. All right, so enough about the printer itself. Let's take a look at some of the prints. That's probably why you guys are here. You wanna see how this thing prints. First of all, let me just say a huge thank you to 3D Printing Pro and 3D Print Farm for some help and suggestions and troubleshooting that I was going through. As much fun as I have with resin 3D printers, you'd be shocked to know that I literally have no idea what I'm doing 99% of the time when it comes to properly setting up resin profiles or anything along those lines. It's a, uh, a hope and a prayer sometimes when it comes to just throwing resin in, adjusting settings, and fingers crossed it properly works. Well, this is Devlock Arts Glitz ring collector statue. It's a little miniature statue, has crazy details on it, and I've just had a blast printing it on this machine. I've printed it, um, I think six times, <laughs> just changing a variety of settings using different re resins with this between Seertech Fask and the 4K resin. And again, pretty much getting great results no matter which resin I was using. I did have some issues um, initially when I switched over to the 4K resin. Again, uh, for the most part, I'm getting some really fine details on the print with that resin, which was great to see. I was kind of expecting it to work really well with this printer, especially since considering that they provided some specs to use with it, which I still weren't able to get exactly how they specified. So I had to adjust those a bit. And uh, I had some print issues around the ears or some of the spikes on his head. Uh, but for the most part, they printed really nicely here. With Frozen's 4K resin, again, I was seeing very similar results between the two at 0.05 and 0.03. And if I compare the 4K resin to the Ceratech Fast resin at 0.03, I mean, honestly, I'm having a hard time really differentiating which one looks best in terms of the details. I think the 4K resin might look slightly better on camera or even just to myself in person just because it's slightly darker in color than the Ceratex Fast Gray resin. Uh, I will say that their 4K resin does seem to be a lot more brittle than the Fast resin. They're both about the same price point over on Amazon for a one liter bottle as well, which is great. So it's all gonna come down to you and your personal preference one way or the other. I'm just happy to see that Fast is working really well on this machine because that it is honestly my go-to resin. I have a closet full from all of my Amazon <laughs> from it, so I just continually run through it. But this 4K resin did work really well, and I will uh, I have at least two more bottles because I ordered a bunch as well off Amazon for testing with this, and I'll be running more miniature prints off of this as well. The next set of prints come from the Creature Armory, who has an amazing Patreon page that you can find these files. Uh, just recently found out about his Patreon and joined that, and now am absolutely loving, loving, loving his files, these characters um, that he's producing and making available over on there. If you're not interested in joining his Patreon, you can also find those on my mini factory as well. But again, the, the details and the results of these look really, really great on this machine. I think the details on this Path of Valhalla statue looks incredibly good. It's a, a obviously a much larger statue than you're gonna see for most miniatures out there, but it could obviously be scaled down or further up but it's just great to see what kind of details you can get off of this machine or even some of the details that we're seeing on the Goddess of Death statue here. If you haven't noticed from my previous videos, I love printing at 0.05. It's, uh, to me, I, I'm not gonna get, I mean, I can get better at 0.03 or even lower, maybe down to 0.02, but for the most part, it's that time savings that I'm after. And at 0.05, I'm almost not that noticeable unless I'm, extremely, extremely trying to look for the layer lines on the prints. And then the next set of prints we're gonna take a look at are from 3D Printing Pro. That's right, 3D Printing Pro over on his YouTube channel uh, has mentioned that he's starting up a Kickstarter for a bunch of miniatures that he has actually produced and will be offering. So this is very cool. He's got, sounds like he's got a game that's coming up that'll be supporting that as well. But I went off and printed, again, just as a comparison between Seertech Fast and the 4K resin on this machine have a variety of different layer heights. Uh, this is also some really small, like this dwarf one here is 
insanely small. What's that about an inch and a half tall? And the detail on all of these just turned out fantastic. Again, I had a number of print issues that I ran into with using the 4K resin and just getting the settings dialed in correctly and then making sure that my bed was properly leveled. I ended up re-leveling the bed at least three or four times, I think, to see if I could get it properly, properly leveled. And that's where I was mentioning the tightness of that bracket made it a little bit more difficult for me to properly get this aligned and level, or at least so I think. And finally, my biggest print that I did on the machine, this is a Black Panther bust by Wexter and it's available over on his Patreon as well. And this was stupidly long to print on this machine, especially at 0.03 layer height. I think it was about a 13, 12 to 13 hour print, depending on which resin I used. I did alternate between fast and the 4K resin for this test as well. It was also one of my initial test prints that I did with the machine. So as soon as I got it unboxed, it had one or two prints under my belt, I ran the first print, which ran into some issues. I posted it over on the Frozen group and it really, I think, came down more to me hollowing the print a little too much and it being too thin to actually support the model after, uh, during the print process there. All of my others, the details on this are just, oh, um, like just stunning, absolutely stunning. I really think these might be the best looking prints that I've gotten off of any resin 3D printer ever. It's just amazing, absolutely amazing what I was able to get off of this printer. Oh, I forgot to also mention that uh, Frozen also included some pre-printed models here, one for Thanos and one for this bearded warrior that have QR codes in the bottom that links to the designers. I thought that was really, really cool of them to do. If you're interested in picking up the 4K Sonic Mini, I'll have links down below over to Frozen's website. I think it's officially available now. It's no longer in pre-order. Again, the price point as of right now is $299.99. And yeah, it's a great, honestly, a great machine. Not a full review yet by any means, but I'm having a great time working with this machine and would highly recommend if you're interested in a resin 3D printer or if you're on the fence about picking up this particular unit, I would really consider picking it up. It's so far worked really, really good other than just dialing in some of my print settings and making sure the bed was properly loved. Also, a thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Could not do this without your help. So appreciate you guys investing your time and money in me. If you're interested in finding out more about my Patreon, you can find links down below. All right, I just wanna say thanks again so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing the full unboxing, you can stay tuned right here to see that here in three, two, one. All right, so if you're watching this, you've already seen me give my initial impressions and thoughts on the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. But what I'm gonna be doing right now is actually doing the unboxing of this unit. So I have not got this out of the box yet and set up. I'm assuming it's gonna be very similar in terms of the unboxing and setup process as the regular Frozen Sonic Mini, which is really straightforward and easy to use. So fingers crossed, this is pretty much the same with just that much nicer screen that they've got included in there. So again, the kind folks over at Frozen sent this over for me to unbox and share with you guys today. Whoa, holy smokes. The detail on this is nuts. Oh, and look at that. They have a QR code. I'm assuming if I scan this, it'll take me to this particular file that they use as their test print. Oh my goodness, the detail on this is outstanding. I'm gonna be really excited to get this set up and get some prints going on this. This looks, I don't know what, it looks much nicer though. I don't know exactly what they've done that's different other than the the build plate is, or the, excuse me, the vat is clearly an upgrade from the original vat that they, uh, the, the original Sonic Mini had a plastic vat and then you could buy an all aluminum or metal vat here. This is nice and heavy duty. The build plate I'm assuming is gonna go on the exact same way. If you're not familiar with the Sonic Mini can be a little bit, you know, confusing at first. You just need to lift this bolt up high enough that it will actually fit into the notch here and then you tighten it down. And then that's how this stays stays in place on the unit on this particular arm here for 
uh, for the printer. Also important fact, there's uh, no resin that comes with this printer. And if I remember correctly, the Sonic Mini also did not come with resin. So if you are planning on picking one of these up, you obviously wanna make sure to be buying some additional resin to be printing with your unit. All right, so the one uh, downside to this printer, and I honestly can't remember if it was the same way on the regular Sonic Mini, the uh, the power cable is like laughably short. This must be, I don't know what, three feet, four feet at best in length. And that's including, it's gotta be like three feet long. So uh, yeah, if this is sitting up on a table, you're gonna need some sort of an extension cable for this, or you're gonna have to buy a longer uh, power adapter. All right, so let's check this out. It's been six hours, let this run overnight while I was sleeping. And for the most part, this printed pretty nicely. I'm seeing some errors and issues with the print. This I, is almost maximizing the full build volume of the printer. Uh, and I'm sure I'm gonna get a little resin drippage here. Let me get my slat mat. There we go. Yep, I'm starting to pour out as I'm tipping it forward. But yeah, you'll see here on one of the sides that it doesn't look like my build plate is fully level. Oh my goodness. I. A lot more resin inside this hollowed out print than I was expecting. Uh, and then I've got some holes here on the front. Looks like some print issues on the front of the actual print here. And I believe that might have been because I might have hollowed this a little bit too thin. So I'm gonna end up trying to reprint this here. I'm gonna print the base first and see how that goes. And then because it's a much shorter print for the second part, uh, part of this. And then I'll just give this another reprint later this evening. I'm probably gonna run some other additional tests here today, but I'm gonna get this off the build plate and get this cleaned up so that we can take a look at it here as well while I end up reprinting it. And hopefully we'll be able to get a really solid version of this Black Panther print from Wexter. <laughs> 